Jeremiah 23. Woe be unto the pastors. In chapter 2, verse 8, that would be the civil rulers, the priests, that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor, saith the Lord. So there are people who are destroying the, the Israelites. Jesus came in, in John chapter 10 and said, I am the shepherd. I love my sheep. They had no shepherd. They had no one to take care of them. They had no one to watch over them. They had no one that looked for their good. And that's in America today. There are shepherds that stand in the pulpit and all they're out is to get the sheep's wool, to get the sheep meat, and get the money from the sheep. But as far as the sheep, what happens in their lives, they don't care. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people. I'll destroy and scatter and feed my people. They're being fed, but they're being destroyed and scattered. They're being fed, the people is being fed, the sheep are being fed for the privilege of the, of the pastor himself. Ye have scattered my flock, sent them off everywhere and anywhere. It's not that they have left. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away. They've got to the point that I'm fed up with it. Uh, whatever, what's ever going on, whatever trouble the sheep, I'm out of here. Can't stand it no more. Into uh, in a land that is given to them by God through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they're like, I'm out of here. I'm going. That's it. They're not surrounding themselves by the temple. They're not doing what God wants them to do in the land. So you have scattered the flock. You have driven the flock and have not visited them. Uh oh the parable that Jesus gives in, out of a hundred sheep one sheep is gone he leaves that 99 and goes finds that one sheep you know when, when a person leaves a church you know what the pastor is supposed to do go over and find out what's wrong with that sheep what's what happened what's the trouble where is he falling? Is he in the mouth of a wolf? Is he going back in the world like Demas? What is this? Go find him. Sometimes I wonder if some of these church members, if uh, the fact, and I don't know how to say it, but, uh, you know, if they die at home, who would be the first people, if, if the guy's a church member, who would be the first people who would, would miss him? The church. His family, his job. Behold, I will visit upon you the evils of your doing, saith the Lord. You don't want to visit the sheep? I'll visit you. You don't want to take care of the sheep? I'll take care of you. You know, sheep cannot defend for themselves. A sheep is, is just a dumb animal. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries. Uh, John chapter 10, whether I have driven them. So they have driven them, they have scattered them, and God has driven them away. And will bring them again to their folds, the land... And they shall be fruitful and increase. Make more sheep. They can't make more sheep if they're being scattered. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them. And they shall fear no more. So they've got fear. Nor be dismayed. They're dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking. They're lacking. Here are shepherds with sheep, and they ain't doing nothing for them. Matter of fact, we read last night's chapter that some of the sheep weren't even getting paid. 
We read last night that some of them were being oppressed by the oppressor. When Jesus comes, the shepherds of the land, man, they're putting burdens on them that Jesus comes to me. Take my yoke. My yoke is easy. Not not what they do. You gotta wash your hands. You can't go so far. You gotta do this. And blah, 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 blah. Jesus says, come on to me, receive me as, you, as your Messiah, as your King. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. Thou will raise unto David a righteous branch, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, and a King, capital K, capital B, shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. So you're going to have a righteous king who is the branch. And he's going to have the proper judgment and justice of the land. There'll be no bribery then. And there'll be no court case that can't be unsolved. Because God knows it all. In his days, Judah shall be saved. It's not now. Today is an individual. And Israel shall dwell safely. That ain't today. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be called in the land. The Jews are going to call Jesus Christ Lord and their righteousness. Today they just call him some good teacher. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, which happened. But that's old news. But the Lord liveth, which brought up, which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all the countries whether I had driven them and they shall dwell in their own land so God's going to call them out of Russia he's going to call them out of Iraq he's going to call them out of Spain he's going to call them out of America he's going to call them out of everywhere where those Jews are and they're going to gather in one place and that place is the Lord our righteousness My heart within me is broken because of the prophets. So the prophets are making Jeremiah dismayed of what they're, pro what they're prophesying, what they're saying. And we've seen it for 23 chapters. And all my bones shake. I am like a drunken man. Like a man whom wine has overcome because of the Lord. Because of the words of his holiness. No control of himself. For the land is full of adulterers. I mean the land. That's what the Jew is all about. That is their heaven. Heaven is not New Jerusalem for them. It's the new earth. The land grant that God gave it to them. And that land is full of adulterers. For because of swearing. Now that's not cussing. Couldn't be cussing. But more so that would be with all the warnings we've got from from Genesis 1 to 20 to Jeremiah 23. That would be an oath of God. I swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And, lie. and all these vows that they make. The Solomon says this better just keep your mouth shut than to perform it. Don't say before the angel was an error. They've been having a lot of vowing before God and not doing what they performed to God. And it's funny, it says the land is full of adulterers. Well, that's a married person. With an with a person who's not their spouse. So their their marriage vows have been broken. So they've been lying about their marriage vows. 
because of swearing the land mourneth. The land is full of adultery and the land mourneth because of swearing. And when we get to Genesis chapter 4, we hear that the murderer's blood, the blood of the slain person cries out to God. Can you can imagine if God would let the, let the earth speak what we would hear. This earth is so filled of violence and crime and unclaimed murderer's blood. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up. No rain. No water. No life. you got to have water for life. And their course is evil. And their force is not right. So may the force be with you. Well, it's not right. For both prophet and priest are profane. P P P. Show that one to a, to, to a church that has priests. Open up the Bible and say, well, okay, you, you have priests? Yeah, Jeremiah 23, verse number 11. For both prophet and priests are profane. Show them that verse. Yea, in my house, the temple, have I found the wickedness, saith the Lord. So what's going on in the house of the Lord, what is supposed to be holiness, is wickedness. If you can see what's going on, I'm, listen, I don't care if you've got a Bible-believing right church. If you can see what's going on in some of the people's lives, there is wickedness. There is no holy place today at all. In a church today, not everybody is saved. That moment for the church age that becomes holy is the day that we meet in the clouds. Even still, we still got to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. So for the church to be holy would be when the last person is judged at the judgment seat of Christ. Then we are a holy gathering. When the rapture happens, no lost people will be there in the clouds. Right now, you can go to church and there are lost people there. And there are things going on in the pews and there are things going on in the pulpit that are wickedness. They're vile. Just because the people don't see it, just because the pastor don't see it, God sees it. Wherefore, their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. <laughs> so now you're working in the dark. But it's a slippery path. Talk about fear. They shall be driven on. Go on. I want to stop. No. Go on. It's too dark. Keep going. My feet are sliding. Keep going and fall therein. Have you ever read Pilgrim's Progress? When he's going through the valley, the shadow of death, and it's just dark. He's like, I'll turn around, but you know, maybe it'd be just as worse as if I turn around. I just keep on going. Well, this verse says, well, the pilgrim gets through. And when he gets to the end of the valley, and then there's sunlight, and he sees everything that he couldn't see. Here, they don't get through. They fall. And they're driven to the fall. For I will bring evil upon them. That's God speaking. Even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. Why? Both prophet and priest are profane. Because of the adulteries. Because of the false swearing. Because of the evil. Because of the injustice. Because of the unrighteousness. And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. Where those Samaria was was Israel. 
Are those the 400 prophets of Baal? Because they prophesied in Baal. And caused my people Israel to err, or err, however you want to say that. God is bringing it back why he took Israel out of the picture. Those prophets of Baal that Jezebel and Ahab had. It just, Israel was, was rotten from uh, Jeroboam. At least Judah had some good kings in there. Those wicked prophets that dealt with Elijah on Mount Carmel. God says, I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. So he's liking those prophets in Israel. Even worse, the prophets are in, in Judah. They commit adultery. And walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of the evildoers. That none doth return from his wickedness. There is no repentance. These prophets go out and no one repents. Have you ever seen that? Yes, I have. When I am preaching on the street or I'm giving out gospel tracts and I tell someone the way, the truth, and the life of salvation is Jesus Christ. And somebody will come up with a buddy and say, oh, no, no, it's just by good works. You don't need to believe that. They're, they're wrong. You're okay. God loves everybody. That is the prophets that are found in Jerusalem. They make the people feel good. And they are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. What's God saying? Well, you know, today the big thing, you know, Sodomite marriages, Sodomite relationships. God says to have a prophet that is committing adultery, that is walking in lies, that is strengthening the evildoers, that are not having people repent, they are just as worse as Sodom and Gomorrah. Jesus calls them wolves in sheep's clothing. They're actors and actresses. They look like the real thing, but they're hypocrites. And their sin is just as worse as Sodom and Gomorrah. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood, bitter, and make them drink the water of gall, I believe that's one of the things they gave Jesus on the cross. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth in all the land. So they're profane the whole land. God says, I'll give them bitterness. I'll give them gall. I don't think that's something you want to drink. I don't think that's something you want to eat. But God will make you eat. God will make you drink. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesied unto you. Don't listen to those preachers. Get out of those preachers. That make you vain, empty, nothing. Your life, your works, what you are, nothing, if you follow them. Listen, if you are a born-again Christian, and you follow those people on the television and radios and all that, and some of the pulpits that are around in this country today, when you stand at the judgment seat of Christ, when you're done, it's going to be vain. There probably will be no rewards. Unless you've been reading your Bible. But then again, you haven't been following your Bible. There are people who are involved in these, these religions will stand at the great white throne judgment and their name will not be in the book and they'll say, Lord, didn't we? I never knew you. And in hell, you don't even have a name. It's a vein. They speak a vision of their own heart. Didn't we read in Jeremiah a couple of chapters away the heart is deceitful above all things who can know it is deceitful 
It's not of God. And not out of the mouth of the Lord. God has not spoken to him. Well, how do I know if my preacher is is a is the right man of God or is one of these false prophets? You better read your Bible and study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You're to check your preacher, your pastor, and your church by what the Bible says. And I don't care if you like it or not. Just because if you like it, that's a vision of your own heart. What does God say about it? That's the question. And I dealt with a man the other night. Well, I asked people, what does God say about it? Well, a few men, what does God say about it? He is going to be the final judge. If you know the book, you'll, you'll catch those wolves. If you are in prayer, the wolves will not get you. If you are studying the Bible, you will identify who the wolves are. They say still unto them that despise me. The Lord has said. Oh, the Bible says. I have heard some of when I was first saved, and, you know, just growing up, I would heard there was a thing that was when I was first saved that in the Bible it says the the eagle and the bear will lie down together. And, and what they were saying is that would be Russia and America will be together in unity. Man, I searched my Bible for about a year, if not two years. I, where is that? And when finally somebody introduced me to a concordance and all that, and I looked it up, I could never find a bear and an eagle together in any book of the Bible. Any verse. I found them to be liars. Thus no, saith the Lord. You better be careful when everyone says, Thus saith the Lord. You better find out if that's what God is saying, because let's read on. God has read... Uh, 22 chapters so far, Jeremiah. There are people that speak my name, and I said nothing to them. Just because he gets up on the pulpit Sunday morning, he may not be a man of God. Paul tells the Corinthians that Satan has ministered. And if you are fooled, you are not reading your Bible. And you can pass this... This CD, you can pass this audio, and you can pass this video to anybody and everybody, free use. And I will say, you will stand before God, and you will give an account, because you have access to a Bible today. You're not in Russia. You're not in China, where the Bible is for, for, forbidden. You are in America. You can get it on, the, on a printed form. You can get it online. The Bible tells you exactly how to find out who's the wolf and who's the real leader. The, the Lord has said, ye shall have peace. Peace is not coming to Jerusalem. few more chapters. Peace is not coming. And Jeremiah, we read today as a family. Oh, king, yeah, where's your prophets? Dead. Run away. There's one prophet, I think it's Isaiah. I'm not sure if it's Jeremiah or Isaiah. It could be Ezekiel, one of those books. The guy makes a bomb shelter. But Lord's going to bring peace. You shall have peace, and they, and they say every unto every one that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. You want to explain that to Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? You want to explain that to Ezra and Nehemiah? You want to explain that to Esther? How about we read the genealogies and the name found in Ezra and Nehemiah? You want to explain to those people, Mr. Prophet? Nebuchadnezzar is mounting up. He's ready to move. You know what these prophets do? They give you death and destruction. 
of your soul. For who has stood in the counsel of the Lord? Jeremiah has. And who has perceived and heard his word? Jeremiah has, and he's the only one. Who has marked his word? I got a well-marked Bible. You say mark your Bible. Is that what? Who has marked his word? Makes it easy reading. And heard it. Second Samuel twenty three eight. Notice how heard it shows up twice in that verse. And marking his word is a verb. Perceive the word is a verb. So you just don't hear it, you do something with it. Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury. Even a grievous whirlwind, it shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. There's the Antichrist. He shows up right in the middle of all this. Mark your Bible when it says, the wicked. Boy, he speaks about a group of people, but boy, that nails down to one man. That head, you do know what the Bible says about the head of the wicked. You have studied the Bible, right? You do know what where we're going with these things. Oh, I'm worried about the 666 and the government. Our, our, our state is going to make us take a mark in our right hand. And the Bible says, oh, I'm going to go to hell. You don't know your Bible, you idiot. I said idiot. Because you have not rightly divided the word of truth and you're ashamed. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he is executed, until he has performed the thoughts of his heart. <laughs> they have the imagination of their own heart, and God says, well, wait till wait, you see the thoughts of my heart. Now, that's a holy, pure heart. That's a loving God. Judge not, they should be judged. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he executed all... Execute until he has performed the thoughts of his heart. That's an army going to come and kill people, no matter of age, no matter of sex, and destroy the whole city and bring a bunch of people to Babylon. This is a guy, this is a nation that's going to come up. They're going to take the king and they're going to kill his sons before his eyes and then poke his eyeballs out. In the latter days, you shall consider it perfectly. You won't now. I have not sent these prophets. Yet they ran. There are men and women running today. And God says, I never sent them. Why are you listening to them? I like them. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesy. Thus saith the Lord, and God is saying, I never said nothing to you. Shut up. And we're going to deal with that by the time we get to this work, this, this chapter. But, if they had stood in my counsel, if they were of me, and had caused my people to hear my words, if they were right prophets, Then they should have turned them from their evil way. The fruit that would have been produced if they were proper was the people would repent. And get right. But instead, they are doing evil. -er. You say, well, Jeremiah, no one got right. No one repented. Uh, doesn't the Bible say that Daniel read Jeremiah and understood Daniel got right by reading Jeremiah. It was just years afterwards. And Jeremiah, we know that God spoke to him. God tapped Jeremiah on the shoulder somehow in some way and said, Go tell these people this. And he would say that. God is saying these other men, I never spoke to them. 
We have God's signet of seal of, of uh, ordination of anointing that God spoke to Jeremiah. We have it by his word. I bet you there have been plenty of people since Jeremiah was written in the Bible. I guarantee there are people out there who have read Jeremiah, a verse in Jeremiah. Something in Jeremiah has turned them to the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. There's wonderful verses in here. And from their evil of their doings. These prophets, these false prophets that are against God, pro proclaiming of God, will drive you to do worse than what God wants you to do. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord? And not a God afar off. God's like, I'm backed off. I used to be right there with you. You know, there's a place in the law that says, you know, about poop. You're to bury your poop. Unless God comes walking through the camp and he sees the unclean thing. It says that God is, would walk amongst Israel and he was to see no unclean thing. Here God's like, I'm, a, I'm far away from you guys. He couldn't even enter Sodom and Gomorrah. He sent the angels. But he came down and talked to Abraham and listened to Abraham's little prayer meeting. Can any Listen, if God couldn't en enter in Sodom and Gomorrah with all their sins, do you think he's in Judah? Do you really think God's in America? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Proverbs 15, 3 says he's in every place. Beholding the evil and the good, saith the Lord. Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? I have heard what the prophet said, that prophesy lies in my name. Saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Ooh, ooh that sound like. I didn't write the Bible. Fourteen hundred years at least before someone had a dream. Certain reverend, <laughs> sorry, who changed his name wasn't his real name. Michael was his real name, and he went to seminary or seminary. And you read the testimony that his wife had about his outlook of God in hell. How long? Shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Probably their whole life. Unless they repent. Yea, they are prophets of deceit of their own heart. Which cause, which, excuse me, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor. Dream catcher. Buy a book in a bookshelf. Interpret your dreams. As their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. Oh, so they're prophets of Baal. And they're asleep because they're always dreaming. The prophet that has a dream, now watch God in this. Let him tell the dream. Right, let him speak. Let the guy have his time. And he that has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. If you don't speak it faithfully, you're just as bad as that lying prophet. So when I say I'm going to quote a verse and I'm not sure if I got the verse right, I will tell you this is what the verse is. And I'm not quoting it verbatim. Because if I say, thus saith the Lord, and quote the verse and I'm wrong, even in ignorance, I am a lying prophet because I'll say, thus saith the Lord, and the Bible didn't say that, even if I forget one word. I'd rather say, this is what I, the verse kind of says, than say, this is what the Lord said, and he doesn't. God looks down. No, that's not in your Bible. you got to be careful. Because a lie is a lie no matter what.
You are to speak God's word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat? Well, the chaff is that stuff that just blows away. It, it's compost pile stuff. It's gone. The wheat is the food. You know what the wheat makes? You know what the wheat makes? You know what they do with wheat? They make bread. You know what bread is in the Bible, don't you? Say it the Lord. Is not my word like as a fire? I don't understand that verse. You've never been in a public ministry. You never stood up in public and said the word hell. It's amazing what little words will anger people. Saith the Lord. And like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. It's called a sword in no Hebrews. Therefore, hold, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord. Look at this one. That steal my word. Go, saith the Lord. You are stealing from God. Even if you got the verse right, and you're using it for your own prophet, Mr. Prophet, I do not ever want to stand before God, saved or lost, and be charged with stealing from God. I'm trying to think. Is it when he talks about the sheep? Is if somebody comes over the wall, a thief or a robber? I think that's in. So here I go. I think that's in John chapter ten. You know what you do when you steal the words of God? You steal God's people. Every person is a God. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And if you get up with your words to preach for people to turn away from God, you have stolen the words of God. You have stolen people from God. You know, I, I'm not going to hell, so I can't say, I was going to say, I'm not... I would hate to go to hell. I can't go to hell. I'm saved. What would be the worst thing for me, for God to tell me? To have somebody stand at the great white throne judgment and say, I'm going to hell because of you. Because of something you said. James tells us, you've got to be very careful with that mouth. Now these people are just speaking outright lies. I'm talking about speaking the word of God faithfully. Everyone his neighbor. It says in Acts they went house to house to house to house. That's exactly what these guys are doing. These people are your Jehovah Witnesses. They're going house to house, door to door. And they're stealing God's word with their Bible. That removes the deity and the the worship of Jesus Christ. There are people out there who get on bicycles and travel all around the people's houses with a little film strip that will tell you that Jesus is brothers with with uh, Satan. How did they steal from God? You ever read the Book of Mormon? It's funny how. Native Americans in America, by this guy, Joe, that came, they all have Hebrew names. I don't think so. Behold, I am against the prophets, say the Lord, that use their tongues and saith, or say, he saith. What's that? The guy who gets up in the pulpit and says, Go serve the Lord! And all the angels turn to God. No, I didn't say that. God is telling you in the Old Testament, the boring book, that there are people out there who are in pulpits. They are lying to you. 
Well, I never knew. That's why these are not open. That's why, you know, Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount don't hit them as hard as Jeremiah does. Well, you had a Deuteral Isaiah in a book. Yeah, because these books write about being against you. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams. Do you know what the foundation of Mormonism is? I had a dream of Michael came down. Do you know what the what the form of Islam is? Having a dream and Michael I always gonna have Michael Gabriel. Well, I was out in the field and this angel appeared in a tree and a toast or whatever kind of thing. You know what? You had too much Italian pizza the night before. Shut up and just go to sleep. Say it the Lord. And do tell them. It's okay to have dreams. A lot of them you don't need to tell people. Especially to get followers. I wonder if you were to check out religions. How many of them are based upon dreams? Isn't Buddhism and all that, 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 that oriental, you know, get one with yourself. Get out of body. That sounds like a kind of sleep. I have a problem falling asleep. Never mind dreaming. Say it, Lord, and do tell them. And cause my people to err by their lies. See, I can tell you, hey, you know, I had this great dream last night. And, and because it is a dream that excited me. and But it's not to turn them away from God. And I'm not lying about my dream, telling lies about the dream, so you will turn away from God. You know, God showed up to me. You know, he's 50 feet tall. He gave me this special word to tell all of you. No, we've got a book. When that guy comes dreaming, you take his dream, you go by the book. And you walk up to him, when you find that he's a liar, you say, you're a liar. And then in America, he could sue you. Because they ain't going to have the Bible in the courtroom. They don't have the Bible in the courtroom no more. And if you were to quote God in front of a judge, he wouldn't hear it. I had a guy tell me he was in the courtroom with his Bible, and they asked that that Bible be removed from the courtroom before they... Continue this, the the we call it, trial, and by their likeness, yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit <laughs> this people at all. Say the Lord. Wouldn't it be grave? God came up those two words in our English language: profit and profit. That's just funny how those two words is fit together for the love of money. And when this people, or the prophet, or the priest, shall ask thee, saying, What is the burden? That would be uh, Isaiah 13, 1 is an example. It's called a prophecy. What is the burden of the Lord? What, what is this great thing that God's saying to you? And we're all going to die. We're all going to be judged. All you speak about is hell. And that's just a burden. You don't preach love. Judge not least you be judged. It's such a burden. You people never get saved by your message. That's what they're saying. They're saying, what's the burden of the Lord, Mr. Preacher Man? What bad news are you going to preach today? Because our preacher preached about lily pads and sunshine and little rainbows. And we married a couple sodomites in our church this week. Isn't that just so great? What is the burden of the Lord? Thou shalt say unto them, what burden? I will even forsake you, save the Lord. And as for the prophet and the priest and the people that shall say, The burden of the Lord, I will even punish that man in his house. So when they reject the message that you're giving them, outright reject the message as a burden of oh, hate, 
That's just a message of hate. God says, okay, fine. He's speaking my words. He's quoting from my Bible. He's reading what, what the verse says to you. And you think it's a burden? If you don't believe what that guy tells you, I'll punish you. I'll tell you, depart from me. But Lord, didn't I never knew you. I sent you a prophet. I sent the guy who told you what the way, the truth, and the life is. You thought he was harsh, but he was the truth. I'll tell you who the liar is. I'll tell you the one who I'm going to damn, that fruity pansy guy you had in your pulpit. That's the one that damned you. Then shall ye then shall ye say every one to his neighbor, and every one to his brother, What hath the Lord answered? And what hath the Lord spoken? That's what they're supposed to respond. Excuse me, sir? Yes. What must I do to be saved? Oh boy. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Sir, can you show me in the Bible what I need to do where I, I don't and the burden of the Lord shall ye mention no more. For every man's word shall be his burden. For ye have perverted the words of the living God of the Lord of hosts, our God. Acts 28, 25. There's plenty of perverted words out there called modern Bibles. God told you there were going to be perverted words in B.C. 599. Not only is there lying prophets, but there are also lying Bibles. And there are lying prophets using lying Bibles. So how can you tell, number one, if a prophet's a liar? Check his Bible. If it does not, well, I had a guy the other night, we were reading two Bibles. And boy, did I know that was not the Bible. So I took him the way and showed him politely the way, and he saw the truth. Thus, thou, uh, thus shalt thou say to the prophet, What has the Lord answered thee? What has the Lord spoken? Walk up to that guy who's knocking on your door. Well, what's the Lord tell me to do? But since ye say, the burden of the Lord, therefore thus saith the Lord. See, when the preacher, when the man of God, when a guy comes knocking on your door, when a street preacher, or somebody hand you a gospel trap. Yeah, yeah, that's cruel. People don't get saved, but God says, okay, that person is calling it the burden. Somebody says, praise God you're doing what you're doing. Praise God for you being. They're saying, what's the Lord spoken? What's the Lord answered? Those people that don't like it, the burden of the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord. Because you have said this word, the burden of the Lord. And I have sent unto you, saying, you shall not say the burden of the Lord. The Lord, you're not supposed to say that to that guy. That is not the correct response to that preaching. You're the one that's violation when you go up and open up your mouth to receive your Jesus. That's wrong. Or you're handed a bunch of magazines to go get. That's wrong. You want to talk about a burden of religions? You know there are religions out there that make you show your 1040? Simple X, or A, B, Z, whatever it is. And will demand that you tithe from your 1040. Now that's a burden. There are churches out there. If you don't go to their church, you're not you're not one of the. That's a burden. There's a church out there that say unless you're the elect of God, you're not saved and can never be saved. Even you can be saved, you can't be saved. That's a burden. When a church gets up and says, I, you know, I got I got to keep the law. That's a burden. But when I say Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes unto the Father but by me, say of Jesus, that's not a burden. Mm. 
you shall not say to burn the Lord. Therefore, behold, I, even I, will utterly forget you. Can God forget anything? Yes, he can forget your sins under the blood, and he can forget you if you don't turn to the blood. He said, well, what happens if my mom or my daddy or my children or my grandparents or my children never get saved? And they all die and go to hell. God will forget them. Right there. You don't even have a name in hell. And I will forsake you and the city I gave you and your fathers and cast you out of my presence. Now that forgetting there is them in the land alive. When the army of Babylon's coming. God help us. Did you hear something? Lord, I hear a bunch of people crying from Jerusalem. Uh, forget them. What? Forget them. Let them go cry to their gods. Let, let, their, let Baal go help them. God, Father, yes. There is no Baal. I know, but that's who they've been worshiping. Let Astra take care of them. Um, God, yes, Angel 457. Asterisk is not a god. I know, but that's who they've been praying to. That's who they want. I'm going to forget them. Let them go to their lying prophets. The Lord Jeremiah's down there. Jeremiah's doing exactly what he's what I'm telling him to do. He's doing right. They know where he lives. They know exactly. Matter of fact, they're going to put him in jail, make sure he stays in one spot. But let them go to the lying prophets. That's what they want. My man is there. They know who to turn to. They've heard the preaching. They don't want to get right. Forget them. And there are some people in your lives, you know what? They just keep on doing wrong and won't do what God... Forget them. We've already seen that in Jeremiah. We've already seen Isaiah. Don't pray for them no more. Paul tells us there's certain people we're not to have fellowship with. Forget them. I will forsake you in the city I gave you and your fathers and cast you out of my presence. And I will bring an everlasting reproach upon you and a perpetual shame. That's hell. Which shall not be forgotten. That rich man today is still in shame with all the riches he had. He is still in shame. He's still not forgotten. Why? Because Jesus said, heaven and earth may pass away, but my word shall never. He said that the word of God is eternal. Now, I believe there's a Bible in heaven. You're going to be able to... I can never remember what chapter it is in Luke, but it's in the Luke. You're going to be able to open that chapter and say, there's that rich man in hell. Still there. Lord, what about those sins I've done? What sins are you talking about? The ones I put under the blood, First John 1, 9. I don't know what you're talking about. But Lord, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Isn't God's memory great? You can sin and God will eventually forget who you are. Or you can put your sin under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and have God forget your sin, but never you. I'll never forsake thee or leave thee. Now, which one do you want? Do you want God to forget your presence for all eternity as you lie in torment in your sin? Or do you want God to forget your sins and to remember you and give you a new name and give you a new body all by Jesus Christ? The choice is yours. And if you are in a pew or you are in an assembly where there are false teachers behind that pulpit, you need to recognize who they are and what they are and you need to get out. And find a true, and they're very scarce, and getting scarce earth by the years.
you know, they put. And I got a couple more minutes before the thing shuts up. I believe when the church doors are all to be open, yeah, you ought to be there. But you know, they they drive that to people. The church should be there. You gotta be in church. Always in church. And I'm not saying not be in church, but you know what? What do you do if there is no church in your area? You think, well, if I go to this perverted church, I, I can. You read Jeremiah 23 about the false preacher, the false prophet? The results of these people, they are forgotten of God. Well, what if I'm saved and I, I go, then your works are forgotten. They burn up at the judgment seat of Christ and you get nothing. I saw somewhere in here we, we, we discussed the word vain. False prophets is nothing to mess with. It's nothing to toy with. Something you don't get involved in. And one of the first things is if they have perverted Bibles, that's, that's the number one rule. Oh, the King James. Yeah, the King James issue, but the King James is the Word of God. If your preacher does not preach out of the King James Bible, that, that's the first mark. Have perverted the words of the living God. And when you do, I, listen, I only did three verses with the, that man the other night. And he did three verses. He is. He was such in prayer with the Lord and such right. No, the Lord knows his heart that he saw the errors of the way and wants to get right. Some people look at well, no, they don't want to get right. They don't want to do right. They are going to keep on following the false prophets no matter what because that's what they want. And I ask you again, do you want God to forgive and forget your sins under the blood, of Lord Jesus Christ, or do you want God just to totally forget who you are. That's the choice you have. There are things that God will forget. And in a lot of sins, God has forgotten of my life. Never to bring them. Now, Satan will bring them up, but God doesn't. 